and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is political unrest in Africa. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about political unrest in Africa, the same individual who has uh, talked to uh, this audience on many occasions about a whole variety of uh, important political issues with the Middle East, Africa, uh, South America, et cetera, uh, our own uh, Dr. Leonard Madhu. And of course, Dr. Madhu, let me uh, welcome you to of the show this morning and tell you how delighted we are again mm -hmm. to uh, have you and to uh, especially be encouraged by the fact that uh, today we're going to talk about not only a current topic but one that goes way back some 40 years dealing with uh, Libya and so uh, let's let's start off by uh, having you give us some kind of assessment in terms of what's going on on the continent of Africa uh, it, today and, and Libya do it today. Well the most important uh, issue you know happening now is the question of libya mm -hmm. you know Conor gaddafi has been in power since 1969 and this is 42 years now in power since libya really became officially independent you know in 1951 it has been ruled by only two two leaders the ex-king idris senusi you know who was overthrown in 69 by gaddafi and Conor Gaddafi himself, you know, so they've had only two, two since leaders. Since independence, there have only yeah. been two leaders. Exactly. For 42 years. That's, uh, yes, yeah, since 1951. Mm -hmm. So since 69, all Libyans have known is Gaddafi. So mm -hmm. anybody who is under 40 years old, that's the only leader, only leader they you know. ever known, you know. Mm -hmm. So since 69, you know, his, his, his uh, regime has been very erratic. Mm -hmm. You know, he came in with a 12th member revolutionary council you know there were 12 of them who overthrew the king in, in 1969 mm -hmm. and since then almost half of them have run away into exile and has fallen you know mm -hmm. falling uh, out with the rest mm -hmm. and that's when his regime started crumbling because what happened when he fell out with those he came to power with what happened he turned inwards mm -hmm. you know his children mm -hmm. and family just the same thing Saddam Hussein did mm -hmm. you know so he lost focus really mm -hmm. Of, 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 of where he was heading to. And that in turn did what? You know, started making people to agitate for more rights. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? You crack down more on those people. Then they agitate more. Mm -hmm. So he had to stay in power by repression. Mm -hmm. You know, not by democratic means or, mm -hmm. or by what he's doing for the people, but, you know, by force. So that's how we came here, mm -hmm. you know, today. Libya really is a very small country, you know, demographically. Mm -hmm. It's between six to seven million people, which is not much. Mm -hmm. But in, 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 in geographical terms, it's really the fourth largest city in Africa. There are almost mm -hmm. 700,000 square miles. Mm -hmm. Only Sudan, Congo, you know, uh, Republic of Congo, mm -hmm. and Algeria is larger mm -hmm. than, 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 than Libya. Mm -hmm. In fact, Libya is always twice the size of Nigeria mm -hmm. in area of land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with immense oil, mm -hmm. about 50 billion, you know, barrels oil reserve, the largest reserve in Africa, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and $100 billion in external reserves in money, mm -hmm. and $150 billion in Commonwealth funds mm -hmm. that's it, that it has. Most of it now has been seized, mm -hmm. you know, by the United States government and foreign banks and all that since this confrontation started. Really, the difference between the confrontations in Libya and those in Tunisia and Egypt is that the one in Libya became technically what you call an armed insurrection. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. in, 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 in Tunisia and Egypt, they were peaceful mm -hmm. demonstrators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even, even when Mubarak tried to provoke them mm -hmm. by sending his thugs, they still didn't pick up arms to fight. Mm -hmm. Because that's exactly what Mubarak wanted to do in Egypt, is inside those people, they start shooting and all that, then he will order the army to crush it, saying mm -hmm. it's, you know, lawlessness. So that's the mistake those demonstrators did in, mm -hmm. in, in, in Libya. You know, when they started, they came out as peaceful, but behind those demonstrators were people with guns. Mm -hmm. What is happening in Libya now really has been planned 
originally. Mm -hmm. They were just waiting for the right time to strike. Mm -hmm. In 1993, there was a serious challenge to, mm -hmm. to Colonel Gaddafi, mm -hmm. you know, led by his army officers from a different ethnic group. Mm -hmm. You know, he mercilessly, you know, crushed it and a whole lot of people were executed. Mm -hmm. Same again, there was, there was a prison riot in a city in, 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 in northeast, mm -hmm. you know, Libya in which 1,300 prisoners were slaughtered just because they were protesting. So it's on and on and on, you know, civil rights mm -hmm. violations and human rights violations, you know, people arrested and they disappear, mm -hmm. you know. So this is exactly why the people got fed up. Mm -hmm. And then last month, you know, in the city of Beda, mm -hmm. you know. Of course, but we let us take this first commercial break and then we'll pick up at this exact point in reference to the coming of this uh, great tragedy that we are now with. Let me encourage our audience uh, to tune in for the uh, second part of this show. And the uh,